porch, how we doing? Hey, hey. So uh, amazing just to be with you guys. Porch Live locations, Boise, Scottsdale, Indianapolis, Fort Worth, all over the place. God is, at mo is moving on the move through the lives of young adults. If we haven't met, my name is JP, Jonathan Precluda. It's a privilege to serve uh, with you tonight. I've spent a lot of time uh, in this place and uh, just have a, a really special place in my heart. Uh, Josiah said today, he said, hey, welcome home. And I feel that, I, I feel like I'm visiting home. I'm gonna start just by sharing a prayer that Sam sent me today. He said, JP, uh, I'm praying for tonight. I sense the spirit giving me a prayer to pray that I'm excited about. I'm praying that pastors would be born tonight, that there would be someone sitting up top in the back, hungover and in shame for the decisions he or she has made in life, but who could be set free tonight and become a mouthpiece for God. I'm asking that your kind would be multiplied, not for your glory, but for God's and for the good of his kingdom. May you rightly handle the word of truth and God use your faithfulness to set apart new vessels as holy and ready for the master's work. And I just responded, what a perfect prayer. And that's, that's what excites me about these moments right here, because there's some of you here for the wrong reasons. There, there's some of you here on a dare. Uh, there's some of you, uh, you know, uh, a friend said, hey, come with me to the porch. And you're like, oh, the restaurant or the bar. And then they turn into a church. And you're like, wait, what are we doing here? And, and, and I'm glad you're here, man. I was you. That's, that's the reality. That's the truth. I was you. And so, Lord, I do just pray you do a work. Open our hearts for whatever it is that you want to do. I pray that you would keep us safe, that you would remove any and all distractions from our lives and that you would just bring us to a place where we see your word front and center and that it's sharper than a two-edged sword, that it would penetrate both bone and marrow in our hearts and change us from the inside out. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, everybody has special, like different gifts. You know, I don't know what your gifts are. Uh, you know, some of you can run fast, you're good at math. Um, you know, everyone is, is dealt gifts. Uh, a gift as God was distributing them uh, that I did not receive was a good sense of direction. Okay, like I get lost in my neighborhood. I'm like, wait, hold on. You know, I'm like driving in circles. I'm like, have I seen that house? Somebody's like, that's your house. <laughs> oh, it's my house. Like I, I get, I, I'm just not very, I truly like I'll pull into a neighborhood. I don't know how to get out. Somebody's like, hey, which way is north? I'm like, I have no idea. Uh, I'm an early adopter of the GPS navigation system. Like I got in that game early. You know, I don't go anywhere without putting it, you know, in, in Google Maps or Waze, or if I don't want to get there, Apple Maps. And and, and so like, like I'm, I'm big on the GPS and, and recently I got a, a new car or it's a, it's a used car, but new to me car, right? And so I'm like, when I'm purchasing a car, if I'm choosing, like I put a, a, G, a navigation system high on the priority list. And so it has that. And I'm, I'm coming back, I'm flying back to DFW from Atlanta. And I don't know if you know this about our story, but four years ago, our family moved from this place, from this church and this ministry to Waco to be a part of a church there and continue God's mission in Waco. So I fly in from Atlanta to DFW and the, the new used car has one of these cool features where you can just hit home. Like you could just push the home button and it tells you how to get there. And so I like pull, I'm ready to get home. I miss my kids. I miss my wife. I went by myself. So I, I push the home button and then, and DFW is like the most confusing place in the world. They're like North Terminal, South Terminal. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So I just do what it says. And, and all of a sudden, so it takes me out of, you know, DFW South exit but then it has me turn left toward Dallas, which I've never done before. Like usually you, you go kind of through Fort Worth to get to Waco from DFW. So I turn left, I'm like, this is weird, but like maybe I'm like, maybe it senses traffic because it's smart like that. Like it knows if there's some traffic, it knows somehow, I don't know how, but, but black magic, but somehow it knows. And so I'm like, all right, so I, I go left, I'm driving to Dallas, like, oh, it's gonna take me to Dallas, you know, but then it takes me all the way to Dallas, then it takes me through Dallas. 
And I'm like moving toward Mesquite, you know, and whatnot. I'm like, this is a really weird way to get to Waco, you know? <laughs> and, and then it has me turn north. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I, I know I'm not good at this, but I'm pretty sure Waco's south. <laughs> and, uh, and so I pull over. I like just pull over on the side of the road. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Well, somehow... The, the navigation system in the car had reverted back to the original owner's address. Yeah, like reset or something at night. And so it was taking me to his house, which he evidently lives north of Dallas. And, and I tell you that, but because before I can follow that, before I can, you know, do what it tells me to, to do, to go where it tells me to go, I have to make sure that I input the right destination. And your heart works the same way. Your heart works the same way. Some of you have given advice to friends, well, just listen to your heart. You've asked questions, well, what is your heart telling you to do? You're like this Selena Gomez, you know, the heart wants what it wants. No, the heart wants what it's fed. Before you can follow your heart, you have to make sure that it is set on the right destination. I just finished a literary work, it is actually released today, and it asked the question in the title, why do I do what I don't wanna do? And I wanna answer the question so you don't even need to buy it, I'm just gonna give you the punchline <laughs> because you have sin hidden in your heart. That's why you do what you don't want to do. And the scripture doesn't say to follow your heart. It actually says to guard your heart. And if you've been in church long, uh, you probably have heard someone like me stand on the stage like this and say, guard your heart. You know, it's at like the 15 year old lock-in. Maybe you grew up in church and there was the overnight and there's some pastor saying, guard your heart. And every 15 year old girl is like, yes, I'm going to, but what does it mean? And, and so I'm gonna tell you because the scripture tells us exactly what it means. And the verse isn't written for a 15 year old girl at a lock-in. It's written for all of us who, who want more from our faith. Maybe you sit down at a quiet time and it feels like a punishment. Maybe you're trying to pray, but you're distracted. Maybe you read the Bible and it doesn't make sense. Maybe like a dog to his vomit, you keep going back to the same things that seek to take you out. And I'm telling you, there is a solution. And if you lean in and as we open the word and we, we see what it says, I think you might find something in it that will actually set you free. That there is a way that you can leave here tonight and actually guard your heart in a way consistent with what the scriptures call you to. Even the Bible can be confusing on the issue because if you've been in church long, you probably have thought about Jeremiah 17, nine by now, the heart is wicked and deceitful and beyond cure. Who can trust it? Who can know it? Maybe you know that verse, but there's, that's, that's half the story because there's also Romans five, but thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart, the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. So I asked a theologian friend, is the regenerate heart trustworthy? The regenerate heart is just a theological term for the new heart, the spirit-filled heart. And they said, yes, but the degenerate heart, the fallen heart, the flesh is never dead as long as we're on this earth. So you always have this sin nature at war with God's desires for you. And that's why Paul says, the good I wanna do, I don't do, but the evil I don't wanna do, this I keep on doing. And I know you've been there. I don't wanna click that hashtag. I don't wanna go back to that porn site. I don't wanna call that boyfriend that I know is no good for me. I don't wanna drink too much and I don't wanna hang with them and I don't wanna watch that show again, but I keep finding myself in this place where I'm doing the things I don't want to do. What does it mean to guard our heart? I'm gonna be in Proverbs chapter four, if you'll turn there with me. It's right in the middle of the scripture in the Old Testament. 
Um, it's the book of Proverbs. Move toward the, the center of your Bible. The first nine chapters of Proverbs is really made up of 10 lectures and it, it's really a, a father speaking to his son. Uh, mostly written by King Solomon, certainly this part is. And so he's known as the wisest man who has ever lived other than Jesus. And so he penned these words thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago so that we can open this book called the Book of Wisdom and apply it to our lives tonight and still in 2023 glean wisdom from it. It's, it's actually pretty amazing. Now, I'll read the whole thing and then we'll kind of break it down and figure out how to guard our heart. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. He, he's like, hey, let me have your attention. That worked really well, man. You guys were ready for the clap. You're like, oh, wait, well, hold on. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. He, he's about to say, he's about to warn us about what we let in our heart, but he says, hey, this is what I'm about to tell you. I want you to open your heart to this. Make sure you let this in your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. The stakes are high. It's life and death. You, we talk a lot about mental health right now. You want mental health. He's like, I'm gonna tell you a, a way that you can have or find or, or keep good mental health above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it your version might say keep your heart with all diligence the word keep there is is like the milk keeps like um, keep the food from spoiling he's saying hey your heart it can turn rotten anybody know anyone with the rotten heart Anybody ever dated somebody with a rut? Don't point, <laughs> don't elbow, not the time for that. But yeah, your heart, it can spoil. Keep your mouth free from perversity. He's telling us how. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the past for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Three key observations from this text. Number one, your heart stores information. It's like a storage container. You put stuff there. Number two, the stuff that you put in your heart determines where you go. Everything from your life flows from it. And, and number three, it, it calls you to guard it more than you guard anything, which I don't want you to sleep on that. Like that's important instruction. And so uh, the first question is, what does it mean to guard your heart? What does it mean to guard your heart? It means to be very careful what you let in. Be very, it's a military term actually. Like a soldier, like an armed guard who, who when someone tries to breach the castle with violence and hostility, he takes them down. Above all else, more than you guard your stereo, more than you guard your apartment, more than you guard your house, more than you guard your money with FDIC insurance or whatever it is, you put it in a bank and in a vault, more than you guard your emails or your computers, password protections, more than you guard anything, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. It's going to determine what comes out of your life. But how do we guard our heart? How do we do it? You take in things through your five senses. You guys remember this from health class? You see, hear, smell, taste, touch. You, you take in things. This is it. This represents your, your five senses. So as you experience things, it, it, it takes what you're experiencing out here into your brain, into your mind. Because as we talk about the heart, I want you to know we're not talking about the physical organ. You know, we're not talking about the thing beating in your chest. In the scripture where you see the heart, it's, it's like the word we say, the, the gut, your spirit, like the, the thing inside you where you keep stuff. And there's a difference between your, your mind and your heart. Your mind is what you think, your heart is what you feel. Your mind is what you think, your heart is what you feel. So as you take in things from your five senses, right, they go into your mind. 
You, you store them in your mind and you know this, like you, you be like, oh man, my mom, you, you have that nostalgia, that familiarity. Oh, oh man, my mom used to make this lasagna. Oh, I smell this place. I remember going here when I was a kid. Or, oh, I, 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 I danced with this in eighth grade. Call me maybe, you know, it's like, and, and it's like all of a sudden I'm back there and all the insecurities are, are flooding. Baby, bye, 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 whatever it is, right? You hear it and it just takes just like a time warp back in time because, because you experience it out here and it comes in here in your brain, your brain then feeds your heart. And it takes those things that you think and it stores them where you keep your emotions in your heart. And then what you put in your heart determines where you go. Everything in your life flows from it. Okay. I, um, I, I was driving here and I was stressed. I'm like, why am I stressed? You know, I had a rushed quiet time this morning. We had staff prayer, you know, I'm pounding coffee. Book releases today. And so like, I'm watching it on Amazon. I wanna know how it's doing, you know? And, and if I'm like in full transparency, I'm watching it too much. I'm, I'm filling my head too much with, I'm trying to find significance in a ranking, you know? And then that feeds my heart. And then when I begin to find identity in how I'm doing, you can understand that how many friends you have, uh, if you have a significant other or not, your, your relationship status, how you're doing at work. If you ever checked, I don't know if you've ever checked your bank account, but you're like, oh, okay, it's still there, you know, or, or you're just trying to, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit relevant today. Uh, I'm just trying to understand like, hey, do I have, the, I don't know if you, it's probably, you probably don't struggle with that, but, but you're, you're just trying to say, what is my safety blanket? What can I grab control over? And the scripture says, says that you're, have you ever been to a club where there's like a bouncer, you know, and he's like choosing, you ever been to one of these places, you know, where they're like choosing who they let, like, hey, you uh, no with the flip-flops, you can't come in, no, but you, oh yeah, with the cute back, come on, you know, come to the front. You ever seen this? You guys ever seen this? You guys are like, I'm in church. No, I've never, I don't know what you're talking about, pastor. Uh, okay, well, there are these things called clubs and uh, they have people called bouncers and, and this Scripture is saying, hey, you got to be the bouncer of what you let in your heart. You got to check IDs, man. Okay, you got to make sure that it is of God because if it's not of God, it's not going to take you to godly places. You just, you just think it's, it's that simple. And you're like, well, that's, that's it's too simple. No, it's that simple. It's real, it's true. And you can not just let, keep bad things out, you can let good things in. Up until about 10 to 20 years ago, if you went to a therapist and you said, Mr. Therapist, I am really struggling with some severe anxiety, right? That therapist is going to prescribe for you if they can, or they're gonna send you to a doctor so that you can leave with what's called an SSRI, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Okay, this is medication. Some of you know this, some of you are on it, you've been on it, okay? Nothing wrong with, with medication, that's not what I'm saying. And in fact, sometimes it's really necessary so that you can actually get to a place where you can apply therapy. But today, you go to a therapist and, and you say, I'm really struggling with anxiety. More than likely, even if they are an atheist scientist doctor, you're going to leave with an assignment that looks something like prayer. It's called cognitive behavioral therapy. And they're gonna say, hey, I want you to start every day in deep contemplative thought. I want you to sit still. I want you to meditate. And it's like our science is catching up with the Bible where David says, I meditate on your law day and night. Set your mind on the things above. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. These are thousands of year old texts that our science is all of a sudden saying, hey, there's something onto this stuff. It actually helps people. But how do we guard our heart? Let me give you five questions. Who, what, where, when, why, 
They're who, what, where, when, why questions. This is a note taker sermon from here. You're gonna wanna get a pen or your phone or something, throw it on airplane mode. You're probably gonna wanna take notes here because it's gonna feel like you're drinking from a fire hydrant as I, as I wrap up and give you these, these five questions. How do we guard our heart? Number one, who are you listening to? It says in verse 20, Who are you listening to? My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. Who are you listening to? Because we all have feedback bias. And when we really, really want something, we want to find a group of people that will say, it's okay for you to want that. It's okay for you to date him. It's okay for you to watch that. It's okay for you to go there. It's okay for you to buy that. We we want to surround ourselves with people who agree with us. Who are you listening to? But not just community, like like what are you putting in your head through your ears? Because I have this conversation all the time. In fact, I've had it for 12 years, 12 years right here. Look, right here, I had a conversation right here for 12 years. People come up afterwards. Hey, JP, young, young woman, man, I just like, here's the problem. You know, I just only date losers. I don't know what it is. I'm just attracted to losers. It's just like, they're like my type. I don't know, like Enneagram loser. That's what I want. <laughs> and, and I'll go, oh, okay, I got you, I got you. Hey, what are you listening to? Hey, what, what do you mean, what am I listening to? I'm like, oh man, what's your favorite songs right now? Oh, but I'm talking about dating. No, I know, just humor me for a minute. <laughs> what's your favorite songs right now? Oh, I don't know. I mean, that new T-Swift album, you heard that? Anti-hero, I mean, it jams, it goes hard. Oh, cool, so you want a relationship like Taylor? <laughs> uh, who else? Who else are you listening to? I mean, I don't know, you know? Miley Cyrus, I can buy myself flowers. You're, 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 you're going to be. You're, you're gonna have to. Because you keep dating losers, right? You, you know, she just went through a divorce with a dude who cheated on her 14 times in the house that she made that music video in. Did you know that? You're gonna have to buy yourself flowers unless you start listening to something else. Oh, oh you thought Doja Cat wasn't gonna take you some? Oh, you, I mean, I mean, for real, like Post Malone was gonna make you love God more. That's what you thought. That, that's, that's really where we were thinking, we're like, oh no, but it's, it's innocent, it's, it's just music, like what's the, what's the big deal? You thought Nicki Minaj wasn't gonna hurt your relationship with Jesus, Lil Uzi wasn't gonna like take you out of intimacy with Christ. No, f- for sure. You, you sound like my grandma. No, I sound like the wisest man that ever lived other than Jesus. It's what he said. Man, what's wrong with the world? Because everybody seems so anxious and depressed and you know, porn and marriage rates are down and divorce rates are up. What's wrong with the world? What's wrong with our music? What you listening to? But you sure I gotta guard it that much? Above everything else, above all else. More, man, when I go to quiet time, God just feels so far. It's in your heart. And it's not just songs. I mean, it's, you listen to gossip. For some of us, it's sports. We start to care too much about, you know, teams and basketballs or footballs or whatever. It just can dominate. Number two, what are you saying? Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. What are you saying? What's coming out of your mouth. Does, you say, does, does what we say really impact our heart? Maybe more than anything else. At least, listen to me, at least it will show you what's actually in your heart. And this is really important if you're considering dating someone, because you were like, well, how do I know if, if what's in their heart is good, what comes out of their mouth? And we'll go to the words of Jesus if it's helpful, Matthew 15. But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. And these are what defile a person. 
I really, I really like him, JP, but like sometimes, you know, he'll, he, he just, you know, he'll say some things. It's not gonna go well. You think your cussing problem is cute. No, your heart's not cute. It's messed up. And if it feels like legalism, the solution is not to leave here and try to stop. The solution is A, know Jesus. Understand who he is and what he's done for you. And when you do, you have his Holy Spirit. And if you do know who Jesus is and what he's done for you, you surrender to that spirit, the spirit of God, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. He can help you stop cussing. He can help you with your porn problem. He can help you with your gossip issue. What's coming out of your mouth? Number three, where are you looking? Third question, where are you looking? It says in verse 25, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you, right? Where are you looking? Social media is so smart. Like the way they do that, like you, you like just scroll over something slow and they're like, oh, you like that? How about this? <laughs> you know, I, I used to uh, be like into, um, I, I loved like MMA, martial arts and stuff. And, and I, you know, I'm not into it anymore, but I, I still like a sucker for a good like knockout video. I know that makes, I know I'm a terrible person, but, but I, and, and it's somehow Instagram has learned this because that explore page is dangerous. You know, you, you know, amen, explore page, dangerous. And, and you're there and there's just like, somebody gets knocked out. I'm like, oh my goodness, wow. And, and I'm like, I can't watch, but let me watch it again, you know? And, 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 it, and if I do, there's like, it like places some violence in my heart. You know, it's like somebody will come up afterwards like, hey, that sermon was terrible, man. And I'm like, I bet if I hit you right. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just joking. There's a lot of judgment right there. I was, that was a joke. I'm just kidding, man. I'm, I'm just joking. It, it, your heart, man, it, it works like TikTok. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you like that video? What about this video? What about this video? What about this video? Oh, you like, or, or maybe you're like, oh, we're not on TikTok, we're Christian. And Netflix, it works like Netflix. Oh, you like The Office? How about Suits? How about this sitcom? What about this one and this one? Oh, you like that one, what about this one? And it just starts to feed you more of what you feed it. It's like a bloodhound. You, you put it on a scent and it's like, all right, where are we gonna go next, you know? So what are you, what are you looking at? What are you watching? Because it's gonna feed you more of what you look at. This is the lie of one last time. It's like, hey, I'm never gonna look at porn again. This is the last time. No, you just fed something and it just grew. And that, that appetite is stronger. And the next time's going to be more difficult than that time because you fed it. You looked at it again. That's why you're stuck. That's why you can't get well. You keep feeding the monster. You keep poisoning your heart. You keep going back and looking at that. Like right now, like these crime shows are, you know, true crime, snapped, right? Uh, what, whatever, whatever you're the one that, that you're watching, you know, the, the murders, um, serial podcast, Dateline NBC, forensic files. There's like an obsession with this. And I was watching one the other day. I was at my in-laws and it was on TV and I'm, I'm watching it. I mean, I, it gets me sucked in. I'm like, oh, okay, what happened? Oh my goodness, when? And they didn't know and how did they not know and where the murder weapons in the tank what and I'm watching this and then it's and I'm and I'm just like feeling like my heart like grow for this and it goes and it talks about the murder and it says how much they were obsessed with these crime shows and then it says they went from watching their uh you know their crime shows their murder shows to committing murder their own themselves to making their own and I was like wait is that gonna happen to me you know like, I don't want to kill anybody, you know? It's like, wait, hold on. I, why am I going to feed my heart that then? Why am I going to feed my heart that? It, it's, it's like your iPhone. It's always listening, you know? 
You know how your iPhone works? You're like, I, I need to buy a new rug. And it's like, oh, you want a rug? Check out Overstock has rugs. Amazon has rugs. Rooms to go has rugs. Rugs are us. You know, everywhere you look, there's like, I mean, there's like rugs everywhere, you know? It's always listening. It's always listening. You watch these shows, you know? The summer I turned pretty, you know? Is that what it's called? How do you know? See? <laughs> Right. I was like, in Waco, there's a show in Waco called Fixer Upper. Yeah, man, I love that stuff. It's like the best thing on TV, Chip and Joe. And I'll watch it and I'm like, babe, we need a new house. <laughs> and, and she's like, in real talk, she's like, we just got a new house. And I'm like, no, we need an old house that we can make new. She's like, but we just built a new house. And I was like, I know, but I wish we would have bought an old house that we could, you know, make new again. It's just like something, it's weird how your desires grow when you feed them like that. The pure in heart will set no evil thing before their eyes. Number four, when do you plan your path? When do you plan your path? Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Give careful thought to your path. Guys, you're not gonna grow in your relationship with Jesus if you don't set a time uh, aside for him every day. And I was talking to a friend the other day and he was talking about his own anxiety and depression. And he said, prayer healed me. And I said, oh, like you prayed for healing and God, and he goes, no, 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 no. Like the activity of prayer actually cleaned my mind. And he was telling me about this and I was kind of thinking about my own experience with anxiety and cognitive behavioral therapy. And I was like, oh, I see how that can happen. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to put a bandaid on your you know, gaping wound. I'm not saying, hey, just pray it away. I am saying that there's something to this setting a time aside to plan our path. And if you're not doing that, like, today's the time to start. And you just put it on your calendar, just like anything else that's important to you and just prioritize it from there. And number five, why do you stray? Why do you stray? It's like asking how would the enemy take you out? He says in verse 27, do not turn to the right or the left, keep your foot from evil. If something is evil, don't touch it, don't poke it, don't sniff it, don't get near it. And it's interesting to me how your peers think, oh, you know, it's just like a little manifesting. You know, it's not really prayer, it's manifesting. Oh, it's satanic, it's demonic. What you're doing is of the devil. Well, it's just crystals, it's just a rock. It's like, no, it's a rock with demonic power is what it is. You're playing with evil things. Don't do it, don't get close to it. Because when you do what you do with the scripture literally says is you give the devil a foothold. If you've ever been like climbing, it's like you just give him in your life, in your heart, you said, hey, put your foot here, hang out here, come, come around, stick with me, let's be buds. And you give him a foothold. Like for me, like my, uh, you know, my history's uh, an addiction to pornography, sexual addiction. It, it owned me, it devoured me. And so I gotta be really careful what I watch. And, and there's a kind of show I love where it's like that you have this kind of moral hero, this, this person that it, it has like a, a real sense of justice, but they're also very skilled in like martial arts or, you know, think like born identity, born supremacy. And so I'm, we're talking through this and my buddy's like, oh, you should see, you know, they're talking about Jack Ryan or, you know, Terminal List. He's like, you should watch Reacher. You should watch Reacher and man, he's like, it's right up here. I was like, oh man, it is. I'm watching Reacher, I'm like, this is so good. I love it. Now, now here's what it's like, because the scripture says, you know, the enemy's the devil. And so what I feel like my relationship with lust is like, it's like the, the devil is, a, he says, the enemy, your devil is a lion. It's like, there's a lion on the other side of this door. And it's like, I got the door locked, padlocked, put a big bar in front of it. And I just like sit here with my back against that door all the time. I'm like, I'm not gonna let the devil in, you know, right? And I'm watching Reacher and all of a sudden like that, there's a shower scene. Like 
the ice on the screen. I'm like, whoa, whoa. That's all it took though. What it's like in that moment, that moment, it's like I walk over to that door, unlock the padlock, move this, move the chain, take out the bar, turn the knob, crack it open, come and get me. And then everything that I see the next day, everywhere I look, it's just kind of contaminated. It's just poisoned. Because I fed my heart something that's not good for my heart. Why do you stray? The pure in heart eliminate evil from their lives at all cost. So be careful what you let in your heart by asking these questions. Who are you listening to? What are you saying? Where are you looking? When do you plan your path? And why do you stray? The absolute tragedy in this text is that the one who penned it, the one who wrote it, did not follow his own advice. And it says that his heart was led astray. This is what it says in 1 Kings 11, talking about Solomon. It says, as Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord, his God, as the heart of David, his father has been. And we have an entire book in the scriptures known as Ecclesiastes that shows us that King Solomon, the man who had more money than anyone who has ever lived before, his whole life is an experiment on, on wealth and the lust of pleasure. And it says that he died in deep depression and despair because his heart was turned away. This is where it went. Solomon is an awful God. Jesus, on the other hand, was tempted in every way that you've been tempted, but he did not sin. It says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. It says, let us run the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, throwing off the sin that so easily entangles us. Because somewhere in this, in, in this message, in, in your heart, you might ask the question, how serious do I need to take it? And I'm just gonna tell you, I don't know that you can take it too serious. I don't know what subscription you need to cancel, right. what, what phone you need to sell, what you need to cut out, but don't just cut out things. You have to let the gospel in. You have to know that this God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins, and he raised him from the dead. And that if you believe in that, you will not perish, but you will live forever. Not because of what you've done, but because of what he did on your behalf. Friends, I stumbled into this place hungover. I smelled like smoke from the night before. I love the $2 margarita specials on Tuesday. And I would go to the clubs and I would go to the bars and I would go to the girls' apartments and I would go to all the places that weren't good for me. And you know how a GPS works? It, it wants to take you to the places you've been before. Oh, I know where you're going here, just let's go. And those addresses, they'll hang out in that GPS. But if you start putting new addresses in, no, I'm gonna go to community group. No, I'm gonna go to church. No, I'm gonna go to the porch. No, I'm gonna go hang out with these friends. All of a sudden, I'm gonna change my playmates and my playground. And those old addresses fall out and new addresses replace them and you heal your heart. You surround yourself with the things of Jesus. Right now, the question for you is, do you have more inputs of the world or more inputs of the kingdom? Have you set your destination on your new home? Is it set to the right destination? If it's not, it's no wonder why your life continues to take you the way of sin. I'm gonna pray for you that you would. Father, would you help us renew our minds have a new hope. See your desires for us. Understand what you've done for us in Christ. Even as we sing this song, will you just help us to 
look at the cross and deeply into an empty tomb. And right now, Lord, would you convict us? Would you show us what relationships we need to remove? What destinations we need to stop going to? What show we need to stop watching? What, what song we need to stop listening to? What book we need to stop reading? Who we need to stop hanging out with? And God, would you give us a greater affection for Christ? That we wouldn't just become smarter sinners, but we would live the lives of saints. Surrender to your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen.